Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. This is our lone sad little satellite. Actually, come to think of it, I probably didn't need all of these batteries. But eh, why not? So, our fuel is almost empty and we are on our way to Val. I've actually already set up our... Our intercept with Val, I had to do it at approximately a 90 degree in inclination. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, just how lucky we were to be lined up at just the right time so that we could get a 90 degree inclination intercept. It was amazing, and it's probably the only thing that allowed us to actually get to Val in the first place, and this is assuming that 726 oxidizer is enough to actually get us into a Val orbit. I actually have no idea if this is going to work or not, because... If you look at our intercept, we have like this little squiggly line. And supposedly our periapsis is at like 78 kilometers? 79? I sort of can't decide if it wants to add an extra meter or not. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the squiggly line actually means. So... Yeah, we're gonna try to get into a Val orbit. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. We only have like, a little bit of fuel left. I wish we weren't carrying around this really giant, expensive heavy tank in terms of Delta V, but you know, eh, whatever. We may as well just ride it out and see what happens. And if it indeed works, we'll be in a polar orbit for Val, which is great because it rotates and we'll be able to see if we can find any Easter eggs later on. So, actually, since I, uh, I haven't even looked at Val, actually, to show you guys where we're going, this is Val. Val is Europa's analog, essentially, since Jewel is supposedly Jupiter. It's sort of a, the wrong color, but this is supposed to be sort of the, uh, the ice moon of Jewel. Uh, there's some interesting landscape on here, but I can't see it here. I've seen some pictures. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys unless we happen to land there later. But yeah, it's uh, pretty boring as far as moons look. I don't see anything particularly interesting. Maybe there's something on the other side. It just looks like some ice and some craters. Of course, in my opinion, I think the real Europa analog is supposed to be... We have to zoom out a lot. Over here, Elu. If you look at Elu, and if you've seen pictures of Europa, Europa is indeed freaking white with like these sort of brownish stripes where there are cracks in the ice. And the reason Europa's stripes are sort of a, a reddish brownish tinge is because I believe it's stuff that's being shot out of Io from its volcanic activity that's like floating around in orbit around Jupiter and then Europa just like catches it and it like gets stuck in the cracks. I read that somewhere, I'm not sure if that's right or not. But yes, I've been wrong before on these things, so... I think that actually Elu looks amazingly like Europa, but Elu will probably be moved to another gas giant. I believe Elu is supposed to be a moon actually, not a planet all its own, but at the moment it's a dwarf planet and we're cool with that. Let's get back to over here, check on our stuff. Okay, we may as well just fast forward to our intercept. Do That's certainly going to take too long. Do -do -do. I suppose as Val comes around the corner, we may be able to see it. Yeah, let's let's make sure that we don't we don't overshoot this. That would be terrible. Oh, big space news, actually. I'm amazed that I remembered this while we're actually in the process of making a Kerbal Space Program video, but the uh, the Russians launching their, their Proton rocket in Kazakhstan have had a crazy failure. They were launching three... Hello, Val. You are a beautiful moon. They were launching three satellites, actually. Three satellites to low Earth orbit to basically work as the Russian GPS system. I forgot the name of it, but it's essentially Russian GPS. And uh, that rocket apparently had something terrible happen to it on the inside. Because after it lifted off, maybe like three or four seconds into the launch, you can definitely tell there's something wrong. It starts like swaying back and forth. And then it starts flying, you know, horizontal and then crashes into the ground and explodes. And there's all sorts of toxic fuel in proton rockets, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Kazakhstan. Hopefully no engineers died on the ground. It was not a manned mission, so we don't really have to worry about anything like that. But still, it's, you know, $200 million US, supposedly, I read. That's... 
that's moderately depressing in terms of losing satellites and a rocket and things not getting into orbit and delays and of course people who aren't very well versed in space are probably going to look at that and be like space is dangerous let's not go to space and generally our lives are going to become difficult i assume yeah 10 minutes i'm just gonna go ahead and let this tick down since we're so close with our periapsis, I want to go ahead and keep this. I don't want it to mess up. Da, da, da. I'm very excited about going to Val. We haven't gone to a new celestial body in a long time on our channel. Oh, six seconds. Okay. Let's see what sort of strange things this does when we go over. Doop. Wow, it's actually not strange at all. It's... It's pretty much flat. All right, well, that's nice to know. So we we have 13 minutes until we reach our periapsis, so... Just gonna... Da, da, da. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take a lot more than I thought. All right, I want... Oh, that is not enough. All right. So there we go. Um... It's going to take about 2,000 Delta V. I don't know if we have that much, actually. <laughs> so, let's see. How how long is that going to be? Can we... Yeah, we can, we can slowly make our way. I guess we can use the last of our monopropellant in a vain, vain attempt to get that done. But I don't actually know if that's going to work. We need an eight minute burn, so we need to start burning at like four, four and a half minutes. Yeah, a nine minute burn. That's uh That's a decent amount actually. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on our RCS, because this is taking way too long. Alright. And uh let's see, four and a half minutes. Alright, let's go ahead and speed up time. Do All right, let's go, go, go. I have no idea if this is going to work, but uh, yeah, why not? Why not, my friends? We're just gonna try it. If it doesn't end up working and we just get in some sort of strange, terrible Julian orbit, I guess I guess I'm just gonna have to come back here with another rocket, but we, we, we may be able to get this done, possibly, possibly. I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on using yes I'm going to hold off on using our monopropellant until I'm a little bit closer to the periapsis just because just because may as well just put this all the way up to 4 eh? How long do you think that's going to last? Maybe two minutes? Let's start at the one minute point then. Maybe 1.30. Alright. Engaging monopropellant. Here we go. Monopropellant is a go. <laughs> Goodbye monopropellant. It's good knowing you. But we, we need you right now. You're important. I guess I could have tried to get closer than 78, 78 kilometers. That probably would have given us a little bit more more gravity. Oh, and there goes our monopropellant. It is it is gone officially. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna make this. We're gonna make this. It's it's not gonna be a very good orbit, but we're we're gonna be in orbit at least some sort of orbit. Yeah, yeah, we have enough fuel, all right, so we can we can fix this, make it nice and pretty. This is going to be probably the strangest orbit I've ever had in terms of around a moon. Yeah, it's bending nice. It's it's sort of sad that we're all out of monopropellant, but I think we used it well. It was it was very necessary. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Slowly pull ourselves over here. Alright, 
There we go. We have successfully made an orbit around Vel. We're gonna quick save this since I've been completely forgetting to quick save constantly in this this particular flight. Let's get rid of this. All right, seventy six. It's pretty nice. I have no idea how tall the mountains are on Vel. These ridges. So I'm sort of afraid to do anything, but we're gonna go ahead and. Actually, I want to go ahead try to keep this heading. Let's spin around and see if we can bring down our AP just a bit. This is probably the most stressful thing in terms of uh, trying to get your rocket where you want it to go. The fact that you can very easily miss your uh, your burn point just by just by playing around with the time warp. The time warp is not your friend. Seventy six. Seventy six point six. I think I think that's close enough for efficiency's sake. Come on, a little bit closer. A little bit closer. How much fuel do we have? No problems. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring down this AP. No problems, we have plenty of fuel. Plenty! Plenty, I tell you. I guess, I guess we could have added, like, a, uh, a little secondary probe, a little lander probe on this. That would have been fun. Gonna get a little bit closer. Because making circular orbits is annoying. Still 76. 76? 76. Close enough for me. Alright. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Wow, Val, you, uh, you really don't feel like rendering for us, do you? Are we too far away for it to render beautifully? It's not very beautiful at all. Hmm. Maybe if we spin around? I can see little pockets of it rendering, but it doesn't really feel like uh, it wants to impress us. So because of our inclination, actually, we're going to go down and then travel back up into the northern hemisphere of Val. This is why when you see a map of the Earth and you see orbits plotted on a flat 2D surface, they go like, there's sine waves going up and down. Because most most satellites are not on perfectly equi equilateral, uh, equatorial. Yes, that's the word. Equatorial orbits. Oh, see now that's that's not too bad. Could could be a little bit better. Oh, sigh. Kerbal Space Program, ladies and gentlemen, still technically an alpha. Doesn't have all the features yet. Let's let's wait. Maybe maybe I could turn up the uh, the settings a bit more. Actually, that may be the problem. Oh, well, anyway, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and let this be for now. I'm going to see just how close I can get my satellite after I check 
on the website to see what the highest ridges are. And I'm going to let the satellite go as freaking low as possible. Yeah, that's, that's precisely what I want to do. So, we're going to do that probably off camera and I'm going to show you in the next episode just where it ends up. And I'll try to figure out somewhere else where we need to go for next episode. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program. My name is Magnius, this is Val, and we will see you next time.